Hey guys, Andy Baker here of andybaker.com and owner of Kingwood Strength and Conditioning. And uh, we are going to do a little lesson today on uh, programming of dips. So I know that's uh, an exercise that a lot of people like to do or they would like to learn how to do. Um, and then also where to put it into their program, how to program them, uh, how to load them, and uh, those sorts of questions. So um, dips are a great exercise because they allow us to get a lot more upper body pressing work without having to do any more barbell work. Uh, there's a limit, there's an upper limit to how much barbell pressing work that we can do and how much we can recover from, especially if you're wanting to get in some higher repetition work. So if you're wanting to do more work in kind of the eight to 15 range to kind of drive some hypertrophy, um, you have to be careful about adding too much of that uh, in the form of your barbell work to your program because it's very easy to overtrain. Dips, which are a body weight exercise or you know, can be loaded as we're gonna show you, but they're a little bit easier to recover from at higher volume. So you know, doing five sets of 10 dips thrown in at the end of the week is not necessarily the same amount of stress, say, as doing five sets of 10 on the bench press. So it's a little bit easier to just kind of at random throw dips into your routine and not have to worry about the, the risks of overtraining or under recovering or doing too much work. So they do create some soreness, but they're adapted to very quickly. Um, and they can be loaded um, in two different ways that I'm gonna show you. So it makes them a really good exercise. They work a lot of muscle mass. They work a lot of the chest. They work a lot of the shoulders, triceps. You know, the old school bodybuilders used to call them squats for the upper body. And there's a reason for that. It's just because they work, they work so much muscle mass so effectively. So a lot of guys can't do them. Uh, my experience has been that in, as far as shoulder health goes, uh, with the dips that you'll probably figure out pretty quickly whether you're able to do dips or not. So within a few workouts of trying to do dips, if your shoulders are not going to help hold up to, the, to that exercise, chances are it's going to be something that you find out kind of quickly right off the bat. So, um, you know, we're not actually real sure as to, as to why, you know, some people can do dips uh, or maybe somebody is, but I'm not real sure as to why some people can do dips completely pain free for years at a time in high volumes. Um, and other people can't. It's not a strength issue. Um, to me, I just think it's our individual shoulder anthropometry and the way that some of us are built uh, kind of with the internal shoulder mechanics. It, it, the exercise just agrees with some people and, and not with others. So, um, but if you can do them, I feel like you probably should do them um, for all the reasons I just gave and that they're able to just add a lot of strength and mass to the upper body. So um, if a lot of people can't do dips at, at all in terms of uh, body weight, um, so it's not a, it's not a shoulder health issue. It's just a strength issue. Um, and if that's the case, you know, if you can get your, your body weight, uh, you know, your body composition, right. Um, and you're able to get your bench and your press up, then eventually you'll be able to get, you know, at least one or two dips. And at that point you can start progressing on them. The hardest dip to get is that first one. So if you're not able to do dips yet, keep working your bench, keep working your overhead presses, keep working your triceps with some things like lying tricep extensions. Max rep push-ups can help a little bit, uh, kind of working with your own body weight. Um, but the main the main thing is, is is just body weight. Is that most of the guys that can't do them, they're they're just too heavy. So um, if it's something you want to do, you probably have to look at bringing that body weight down. Now, where to program dips? Where in your program should you do them? So um, you know, really any upper body day, they can all they can be thrown in there. So if you're training on a four day split um, and you've got you know two lower body days each week and two upper body days each week. You can throw dips into either upper body day. So dips like frequency, they can be trained fairly frequently. So you could do them one day a week, you could do them twice a week, okay? So it's kind of up to you. So uh, they will, when you're, when you're first starting off on them and you're not very good at them, they will get better fast with frequency. So, you know, it's not something you need to do every day. You don't need to even do them every other day or three or four times a week. Twice a week is usually good in conjunction with your other upper body movements and you'll get progress doing that. So. Um, one way to do that, if you're going to train them twice a week on like an upper lower split is on one of the days, train them a little heavier. So if you're able to do some weighted dips, you can kind of train some heavier dips, maybe in like the four to six rep range, uh, with added weight. And then on another day of the week, you can go for a higher rep, higher training density. So you could train, you know, body weight only in the 10 to 15 rep range with short rest periods. Um, and that will help with both strength and hypertrophy. So that's a good way to do it. Um, rather than just doing the same, you know, rep range every single time. So um, four day split, very easy to add it to, to any upper body day. Um, if you're training with a full body type workout, say like the a heavy, like a three day heavy light medium program or a Texas method type program, uh, dips are fairly easy to add to those types of movements. 
usually I just tack those on to the Friday workout. So if you're gonna train your full body Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'll tack dips onto Friday, just because they do create some, some tricep, chest, shoulder soreness, especially at first. So that little bit of added pressing work just gives us, uh, throwing it on Friday gives us the weekend to recover from it. You can you know bench press, say Monday and Friday, and do your overhead work on Wednesday, and then throw in some dips at the end of Friday for just a little bit of extra pressing volume. Um, so I usually like to do the dips in place or, or in addition to the barbell work, not in place of. I have in the past tried them, uh, say like with a heavy light medium program of doing dips as like a medium day exercise. So having a client, you know, bench heavy on Monday, overhead press on Wednesday, and then Friday doing dips is kind of the main pressing exercise. And I didn't find that they're, they're actually a really good substitute for the barbell work. Uh, to me, they're better in addition to the barbell work. So keep your barbell, your barbell pressing volume high um, if that's a priority for you. So keep continuing to hit that two or three days a week, but then and then layer the dips on on top of that. Okay, um, that's the best way to, to to do that. Now, if you're using a uh, like a power building type program, like one of my power building type programs, you'll see that I use dips a lot. Uh, as often, sometimes I'll do them twice a week but almost always um, on a separate day other than from the main chest day. So if you guys are familiar with my power building programs, you know that early in the week, we have kind of our main bench day and we do a lot of chest kind of accessory work. So we start off with heavy bench and then we might do something like incline and then maybe a flat dumbbell press or dips. Uh, but we'll usually do like three exercises on Monday. And so we hit the chest really hard with a lot of volume and a lot of intensity. And that's our big stress session for the week and then later in the week i like to hit the chest again but this time kind of indirectly a little bit lighter so i don't like to kill the muscle group twice a week i like to hit it really hard early in the week and then hit it again kind of lightly later in the week so um, and a lot of times i use dips for that uh, for that movement so early in the week we might do bench incline and uh, like dumbbell presses and then later in the week, maybe on a day where we're doing more shoulder tricep type work, I'll, I'll make sure and throw in dips on that day so we get a little bit of kind of indirect work um, on the chest. So it, it gets it's good stimulation, but it doesn't, it doesn't just annihilate the chest like we do maybe a little bit earlier in the week. So um, that's one way to do it. Now, in terms of how do we program the exercise individually, lots of, you can program it uh, several different ways. So you can do just basic straight sets um, and trying to add a little bit of, of weight or reps each week. So you can just set a goal, say, you know, three sets of eight to 10 reps. And let's say the first time you do that, you're able to do that with a 25 pound weight. Um, and then the next time you would try to do a 30 pound weight. And the next time you try to do a 35 pound weight. A lot of times with dips, what I try to do is um, I'll work within a range. So instead of saying, I'm gonna do three sets of 10 at 25 pounds, and then whenever I can get three sets of 10, I move up in weight. Instead, I'll usually work with a little bit of, uh, 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 within a little bit of a range because dips are one of those movements that they tend to lose steam as you go. So if you're gonna do three, four, five sets, chances are you're gonna have a hard time kind of holding that same, uh, that same amount of repetitions through all of your sets. So if you get 10 on the first set, chances are by the third, fourth, fifth set, you're gonna be down to seven or eight reps if you're pushing hard. So, and if you're able to hold say 10 reps across all five sets, chances are you're, you're really not, those first sets, you're really not pushing that hard. So, because um, the dips, which are very heavily dependent on tricep strength, anything that's very heavily dependent on triceps tends to lose steam very easily. So, um, that being the case, I'll operate within a range. And the way that I do that, I'll, I'll say, all right, we're gonna do uh, four sets of eight to 12 repetitions with weight. And the way that I progress it is when one set achieves at least 12 reps, and no sets drop below eight, then I go up, okay? So if I get a set of 12, a set of 10, and a set of nine, and a set of eight, I'll go ahead and go up, because none of my sets drop below eight, and at least one of my sets hit 12. And then I go up and wait, and maybe the next set, or the next time I, I get uh, sets of 11, 10, nine, and eight, well, then I don't go up, because none of my sets hit 12. And that's just, that's a, that's a good way to progress. It's a conservative progression, but it makes sure that you're, um, you're not going up too fast and you're able to maintain a, a good quality workload. So dips are one of those things we're gonna air on more volume rather than intensity. I will occasionally work up to or have somebody work up to a real heavy set on dips, but overall, you know, we're not gonna be doing like 
real heavy sets of three to five reps on the dips, at least not regularly. You know, on occasion, it can be good to kind of burst through a little bit of a strength plateau if you find that, you know, at a given weight, you just, you can't kind of break through. You keep running up to the same numbers again and again. Maybe you spend a couple of workouts doing something really, really heavy to kind of kickstart you into gear and, and, and break through a little bit of a plateau. But uh, by and large, you know, the barbell work is where you want to go heavy. That's where your work is going to be in the three to five rep range. Dips are an assistance movement. They, they do better for a little bit higher rep range. So typically I, I like kind of an eight to 10 range, but I'll go as high as 15 uh, on occasion if I'm just working with body weight or I'll go sometimes as low as four to six, but not real regularly on the heavy stuff. So that does tend to irritate the shoulders and the elbows a little bit if you do it too many workouts in a row. Um, heavy. So you can go basic with your programming and just straight sets working within a rep range. Uh, like I mentioned, um, you can also do, there's ways to do kind of density, uh, density type work, um, where you, you can set a, you can set a clock. You can say, I'm going to do, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes, and I'm going to get as many dips as I can in this period. Um, you know, typically if you do that sort of thing, you're gonna, just going to be working with body weight, but that's, that's one way to do it. It kind of makes training a little bit fun. It's something a little bit different that you can do. So that's good. So you can say, all right, I'm going to set a timer for 10 minutes. And, you know, I got 52 reps today. Um, you know, next time I do this, I'll set the timer for 10 minutes and I'll try to get, you know, 53 reps or, or more or whatever. So you're trying to beat your total. You can also just, you can set a rep goal. So you can say, I'm going to do 50 reps today of dips and no matter how many sets that it takes. And uh, I'm going to record how many sets it takes me to get there. And that's, that's another, that's a, that's a way that I, I probably use that more than a time variation is I'll, I'll set the volume for somebody. I'll say, all right, I want you to do, you know, 40 reps on the dips today. And then they're just going to break that up in as many sets as, as they need to. So they might get 10 or 12 reps on the first set, but then by the end, you know, to get to 50 or 40 or whatever the target goal is, they may only be getting, you know, three or four dips per set. Um, and so the way that I'll progress that is I'll, I'll usually say like, all right, we're going to do, you know, 25 reps. Like, like if somebody's not very good at dips, I'll say, we're going to do 25 total reps. And when you can achieve that in five sets or less, then we're going to bump your rep goal up to 30. And they'll do that as many sets as it takes. And when they can get to 30 in five sets or less, then we'll bump that up and just keep bumping it up like that. So you set some sort of criteria uh, for progression, but you keep trying to raise the, raise the volume a bit, different ways to do that. But I really, really like rep goals uh, as opposed to the, the straight sets, depending on where you're placing them in your workout, because they allow a little bit of kind of performance flexibility, especially if dips are coming late in the workout and you've already done a bunch of other work, your level of strength is going to vary quite a bit day to day. It's not like if you're starting out every single upper body workout with bench or overhead press and you're consistently starting out fresh and you can kind of gauge apples to apples. Dips, if they're coming after a bunch of other upper body work, you know, you're going to vary a little bit, kind of like chin-ups where, you know, you might get 10 today and then the next workout you only get eight on your first set. That doesn't necessarily mean you got weaker. It just means that you're a lot more tired today because maybe what you did on the front end of the workout was a lot more fatiguing. So a rep goal is good because it, it still makes you get your volume in, but allows for you to be maybe a little bit more tired uh, one day or the other. So um, so that's a, that's a really, really good way to do it is with rep goals. Now, in terms of adding weight, uh, two different ways that I like to add weight to dips. Uh, one is the standard way, which is just to use a weight belt here, which I think most of you guys have seen, you know, any kind of belt, um, this is from Rogue with a chain that you can suspend weight from. Um, you can suspend a kettlebell from there. You can suspend weight plates. You can rig up dumbbells. Kettlebells and weight plates, in my opinion, are a little bit more secure. So you can rig those up on there. That's a, obviously a, a very easy, good way to add weight. You can hold weight in your feet, um, you know, but I don't like that way as much. Uh, and you have to have dip stands that sit pretty high in order to do that, to hold the weight in your feet and not not hit the ground. So um, I think a belt is a much better option. They're not very, they're not very expensive. So if you're going to get into doing more weighted dips and weighted pull-ups, go ahead and invest in a weight belt. Don't hold them between your feet. Using the weighted belt, um, you're going to feel a lot more of the stress on the chest and the shoulders. Still a lot of tricep work, obviously, um, but much more so uh, chest and shoulders where the, the weight is really, uh, you know, loaded at the bottom end where the, where the chest and delts are very, very active. If you want to use dips to really, really hammer your triceps, uh, one thing that we sometimes do here is we, we load the dip with bands, okay? So just like you would with a squat or um, a deadlift or a bench press is when you put band tension 
uh, on the barbell or on yourself, the weight obvi or the load obviously gets harder the closer you get to lockout. Okay, so you've got the closer you get to lockout, the more that band tension is increasing and the, and the harder it is. And that's really where the triceps kind of take over. So when you put band tension on there, you really, really, really feel it in your triceps. That's a really good way to build tricep strength or tricep mass, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, and so if you want to try that, I've got it rigged up here. I've got a mini band here. I wouldn't use super heavy band tension. Um, I've got a mini band here. Sometimes I'll use the blue monster minis, but usually a mini band is good, especially if you're gonna do high reps. You have to make sure you secure it to the base of your dip station. Uh, you don't want the thing popping up you know, and hitting you while you're doing them. That could be dangerous, but you're gonna secure it here and then you're gonna have to get down and you're gonna put it around your neck. Okay, and then you'll stand up with it and do your dips. With the, with the weight pulling down on you. So I'm gonna demonstrate a few repetitions here, okay? It's a little bit uncomfortable on the neck, but that's okay. Okay, so that was a pr pretty easy set of eight there with the mini bands just kind of for demonstration purposes, but even just doing that, I can already feel it quite a bit in the triceps. So um, you do a high volume of that and your triceps are gonna be talking to you the next day. So um, anyways, guys, that's just some basic stuff on dips. Let me know in the comment section if you have questions and uh, I'll talk to you later and thank you for watching.